morning. Welcome to worship. Good morning, everyone. <clears throat> we are so happy that you are in the house of worship, in God's house this morning, in this beautiful morning, actually. We had prayed for rain last night in our Saturday evening service, and I think our prayers were answered. Now we're going to pray that it continues to rain for the rest of the day. <laughs> I was told that this is not enough. Uh, we would need a whole day rain for the crops to grow and the fields to be nourished. So thanks be to God for this beautiful morning. I welcome also those who have joined us online. Welcome. And then I'm going to ask all of you to could you please uh, mark your attendance. Those online, could you just give us a thumbs up or say hello? And those of you in person, could you please mark the attendance pads? And if you have any joys and concerns you would like to, for us to lift up during times of joys and concerns, would you please write them down in our prayer cards in the pews? Just for the good of the order, I would love for us to just go through our announcements so that uh, you're aware of what's going on. Our radio broadcast for this morning is sponsored by Ann Barr. Our altar flowers are given by George and Kathy Dare. And in celebration of the 50th wedding anniversary, can we give them a hand? Many congratulations. <laughs> uh, please note that our office hours for summer are 8.30 to noon. We would like you to continue to help us to be ushers, greeters, and refreshment persons and liturgies for the coming month of July. Please also note our BBS is this July 11th to the 14th, and if in any way you can come and help us out, we would love to have you be present with us. Our dates for our district superintendent is now June 9th, not Ju uh, sorry, July 9th, not June 25th, and we will be looking forward to hearing our district superintendent come and be with us. So please mark your calend calendars and join us. Blood drive at Wesley Center is uh, this Wednesday from 1 to 6 p.m. And of course, Touch of Grey is also this Friday. We have a great time of great food and fun. So if you look, if you have time, come and join and be with Touch of, touch of Grey. Uh, just like with Mother's Day, we are asking all of you if you would like to give tribute to your fathers or father figures in your life to send in a picture to the office. So we would like to make a video tribute on the screens for Father's Day, uh, just the way we did it for Mother's Day. And it's just a small way of saying thank you to those who have nurtured us like fathers and who have been our fathers. And now I would like to invite Paul to come forward and he's going to tell us about Pi Day or Pi Sunday. Good morning. Oh, that was so nice. <laughs> hey, so uh, back in the 80s, I'm with my uh, niece and she's on the swing set. You know, she's this old. And she's trying to get herself going. And I say, are you up to top speed? And she says, no, not yet. So she's swinging some more. And I say, are you up to top speed? And she says, no, not yet. So now I can see she's swinging as much as she can. And I say, are you up to top speed? And of course, in the cutest voice ever, she goes, I'm up to top speed. Well, that was the late 80s, and since that time, Diane and I look at each other and we go, are you up to top speed? Well, Diane isn't today, and that's why you have me here to talk about Pi Sunday. So in two weeks, on the 25th, it's Pi Sunday, and it coincides with 50-year uh, membership recognition. There might be some folks here that know about that. <laughs> I'm not looking at, at that lady over there, honestly. But in order to have the pies, we're going to eat them in Fellowship Hall. In order to have them, we have to have people provide them. So there's a sign-up sheet downstairs, and we can all wave at Joyce because her name is on there already. Thank you. 
And there's a chance that there might be a young man standing down in that area reminding you as you leave today. Thank you very much. Thank you, Paul. And Leanne has also some update on preschool. Good morning. I'm not going to touch that, right, Pastor Keck? Don't touch that. <gasps> oh, no, they're going to fire me now. OK, anyway, hi, I'm Leanne. Um, and the reason I'm talking for the preschool, club, the chairperson of the preschool board. And yesterday, we had a wonderful opportunity to share with our community uh, because we had a little thing called French hens literally on our doorstep. And so the, thank you to the Methodist men who allowed us to use a couple of their nice canopies. And we set up a, couple, a spot right here on the corner, offered free water and homemade cookies and another canopy for the kids to come and play. And it was really neat. And um, also as well as tables and chairs here on this side of, of the green area of our church. And again, over here on this side as well by the parsonage. Um, just a really neat opportunity to connect with our community, to be present for them, to remember that the preschool is here, but more, more than anything, to connect with our community. And it was really appreciated and well attended. And um, I hope as the other French hen opportunities come the rest of the summer that our church can also find other ways. Um, the next one, just I'm going to switch hats, UWF, uh, our next one, we have our craft and bake sale that day here. So we will be doing that down in Fellowship Hall as well. But be looking and be present and come and share our, our church with our community. Thanks. Thank you, Leanne. So church, these are all our announcements, but now is the time for us to get ready for time of worship. Can I invite you to please stand for our first hymn, Where Charity and Love Prevail. Let us sing. Good morning again on this wonderful rainy morning. I love it. Um, please remain standing for our call to worship. We are the people of God created to love. We will love the Lord our God with heart, soul, mind, and strength. We are people of God determined to love. We will love our neighbors and treat them as we would be treated. We love neither from a sense of obligation nor to gain popularity or favor. 
We choose to love both the lovely and the unlovable because love imitates God's nature. For the whole law is summed up in a single commandment. You shall love your neighbor as yourself. Please be seated. And let's join together in our unison prayer. Dear Lord, I give thanks that I am free to serve, love, relate, connect, and enjoy other people. The slaying of the sinful nature frees me to fully love others, especially my brothers and sisters in Christ. Help me to perfect my love toward my neighbor. In your name I pray. Amen. And now I'm looking out. You're, you're saying no? I'll make it worth your while. Do you like animal crackers? Yeah. Good morning, children. <laughs> um, I wanted to ask a, a quick question because I, I have a scripture today where the Apostle Paul is telling us things about how we should be towards each other and how we shouldn't be towards each other. But I'm going to begin by asking, do you have a dog? No, but me and my mom are trying to get one. Trying to get one. That's okay, okay. What kind of dog do you want? Do you know? Um, like a pit bull or something like that. A pit, a pit bull. Yeah. You, you know what? Some people are scared of pit bulls. You know, kind of like they're scared of my dogs. <laughs> right? I have, I have dogs. <laughs> right? <laughs> right? Because my dogs bite. <laughs> right? Do you ever, because so one of the things you want to do when you choose a dog is you don't necessarily want one that's going to bite people, and particularly like you. So would you, you wouldn't want to get a dog that bites you. No, I wouldn't want to get a dog that bites me. <laughs> yeah, because some dogs are just, they, they almost never bite, but almost every dog bites once in a while. Once in a while. But if you have a dog that bites all the time, Sometimes they, they take them back. You know, this dog bites too much, All right? And, and interestingly, Paul in the Bible, he says we shouldn't bite each other, All right? Have you ever, you know, one of the people, one of the things that bites the hardest, you ever been bitten by like a small child? Their teeth are so sharp, right? And, and you bit yourself when you're, <laughs> Okay, I'm confused by that, but, uh, but yeah, sometimes they go, you have to teach a baby not to bite. Don't bite. Don't bite. And when you get a dog, you have to say, don't bite, right? Because in the Bible, it says, if we start biting each other, right. And what, what do you think Paul means by that? Biting each other. Does he mean literally biting each other? I don't think so. No, he's like, if you're mean to each other. Don't be mean to each other, like biting each other. Don't be mean to each other. When you start being mean to each other, what does it do? It makes us all miserable and afraid and hurt. So don't hurt each other. What is his, his advice? Love each other and don't bite, right? And that's what, I, that's what you want out of a, of a new dog, right? You want a dog that's going to love you, not bite you. So do you know when you're going to get this dog? Um, I don't know. Um, 
the person who's gonna give us the dog isn't responding to my mom. So. Oh no. Oh no. Well, don't bite that person, but maybe you'll get that dog or some other dog. But the thing we don't want from our dogs is biting. The thing we don't want from each other is biting, right? Yeah, yeah. So what I did is I brought animal crackers and I was going to say, are there any of these that you're afraid of? What about the lion? You like lions? They bite. You don't care? You just like lions that much. All right. And, and as I understand it, you like animal crackers. How, how many do you like? <laughs> there you go. One more, just one more for the, for the road and, and for somebody else. Okay, I think that's enough. But let's end with a quick prayer. Dear Lord, sometimes we bite each other. Not literally. We don't actually bite each other, but we bite each other because sometimes we're mean to each other and we say mean things to each other and we hurt each other and hurt each other's feelings. But you tell us that as Christians, we are to love our brothers and sisters and we're all brothers and sisters. Let us keep to being loving people and not biting people. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. What? Amen. Okay, I got enough amens, I guess. All right, sure you don't want one more. All right, you may take your seat. Don't drop them. Good job. Thank you for coming forward, and thank you, Pastor Cake, for the, such a nice lesson. So church, let us come together sharing of our joys and concerns. The concerns and joys brought to us last evening in our uh, Saturday service are such. Uh, Angie Keller would like prayers for her father-in-law, Victor Keller, who recently was diagnosed with Parkinson's. Kathy is very thankful to God for her mom, who is finding peace at the nursing home. And then we have uh, Jerry and Terry Olson, who needs prayers for their niece and nephew, Brand and Brina, and also for their uh, daughter-in-law, Amanda's father, Steve, who is still not doing that great and is having oxygen issues. Um, and of course, we would like you to please pray for Barb Berry uh, as she's mourning and grieving the loss of her sister. And so these are all the concerns that were brought forward as well as joys, uh, since they're none other. Uh, let us then spend a little more extra time in lifting up our prayers as the music is being played. And then we'll come together for pastoral prayer and pray the Lord's Prayer together as well. So let us pray. The words of the psalmist says, His pleasure is not in the strength of the horse, nor his delight in the legs of the warrior. The Lord delights in those who fear him, who put their hope in his unfailing love. Gracious Heavenly Father, we come together as a church in your holy presence. And Lord, indeed, we come and claim your unfailing love. Because, Lord, we do have a healthy fear of you. We know that you are a God who keeps an eye on us, who protects us, who provides for us, who comforts us, who builds us up, Lord, who mends us and molds us. 
And we thank you, Lord, that you have claimed us to be yours. We have claimed you to be ours. We thank you for this day. We thank you for the rain that we prayed for last evening. And we ask that your rain shall continue to pour down. Like the scripture says, you will pour down rain as righteousness into the land. And Lord, we ask for righteousness. We ask for righteousness in our personal hearts, in our church, in our community, in our nation. And Lord, above all, in all the earth, your righteousness should pour down. Lord, we come together and we lift up all these concerns that were brought to our attention. And we ask that you may touch Brent, that you may touch Barina, that you may touch Steve and Barb Berry as she mourns and grieves the passing of her sister, and that you may touch Victor Keller. And along with these, Lord, many whose concerns have not brought to our attention, Lord, we lift them up as well, asking, Lord, Heavenly Father, that you may give us attention, that this person would see your face and feel your touching hand of healing and wholeness. Lord, you, should, you said ask, so we do come asking, and we trust that you are on. You are on it to help us. Please hear our prayers. And we also give you thanks, Lord, for all the good that has happened in our lives. For Kathy's mom, who's um, getting settled in the nursing home. For thank you for all the events that we put together, and they go well. And our fellowship is a joy for everyone. Lord, continue to walk with us. Let your Holy Spirit continue to be welcomed among us. So we are made whole and formed to be the disciples of Christ, as you have called us to be. So hear our prayers this morning, as we also pray the prayer that Jesus had taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. As I mentioned, we or at least I mentioned last week, or last night, uh, we were at uh, the Renaissance Schomburg Convention Center three, three days this week. This was our annual conference. This is your booklet that you get when you go to the annual conference. And it has lots of stuff, lots of paperwork, ministry, worship, and so it's where the pastors and lay representatives from all the churches in northern Illinois gather with the bishop and the cabinet and we, we have legislation and all sorts of different things. Um, and not only are we related to all the, the churches in northern Illinois, but we're also related to all the churches uh, in the United States and around the world. So when we give, we give not only to our church, but we give to the Northern Illinois Conference. And all the things that the conference does, we participate in. And in our gifts, we have something called an apportionment that goes to support not only Northern Illinois, but also many of the works of the United Methodist Church around the country and indeed around the world. So when you give your gift this morning and you know every month, those gifts are not just to us. As, as a congregation, we give to so many others through our connection. So as we receive our gifts today, please keep in mind that your gifts are multiplied uh, and are felt literally around the world. So our ushers may come forward.
And gracious Lord, may these gifts find their way into the lives of the people here in our church, but not just there, into our community, into our conference, and into the church of our country and around the world. Bless these gifts to all these purposes. In Jesus' name, amen. You may be seated. I have to say, that's how I was raised, with that melody in our heart. So thank you for getting to hear that. Um, today our scripture comes from a letter um, that Paul has written to the Galatians, and it's chapter 5, verses 13 to 15. For you were called to freedom, brothers and sisters. Only do not use your freedom as an opportunity for self-indulgence but through love become slaves to one another. For the whole law is summed up in a single commandment. You shall love your neighbor as yourself. If, however, you bite and devour one another, take care that you are not consumed by one another. The word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. That was really good, by the way. Uh, I'm glad we, we actually, Tim got us a new microphone. I think it worked. It sounded really great. So thank you for, for that. Sorry about my tablet being there so that as you were, as you were touching your paper, 
you were changing the slides. <laughs> so, um, so we've got a lot of new stuff. We just have to learn how to use it, right? But that was really quite wonderful. Thank you. Thank you. Um, free to love. A lot of us are not free to love. This is, this is part of the Christian message is that due to various sins that we might have in our life, due to um, addictions that we might have in our life, due to oppression in our life, uh, we, Paul will often say, we're more slaves oftentimes than we are free people. And in, in Paul's times, there was a great number of slaves in the Roman Empire and such. And when you're a slave, your will is not your own. And so one of the, the imageries that Paul talks about is for us to be free, no longer slaves, that your will is your will to exercise as you see fit. We see this for you were called to freedom. You were called to be free, and Christ makes us free. Right, so bro brothers and sisters, uh, we are called to freedom, brothers and sisters. Only do not use your freedom as an opportunity for self-indulgence. That once you're free, what do you do with that freedom? This is one of the things that Paul talks about. Christ makes us free for what? Once you are free, what are you free for? Well, one of the things he's noticed that as he preached to others and they realize that they're free, they use it for self-indulgence. What do you use that freedom for? And so he's often warning us against using our freedom for ourselves, just for ourselves. So he goes on and he says here in Galatians, talking to them in this letter, but through love become slaves to one another. So in your freedom, he's saying, you're free now to love. And if you're free to love and you seek to love, then you start to feel as if your will is enslaved to love. Let me try to explain that. Next, next week, we'll, we will be commissioning our ASP folks who are going to be going on their trip to Kentucky. Now, if you've ever been on mission trips, and when I was on mission trips with a lot of young people, sometimes it took a lot of coaxing to get some young person to go on a mission trip. They had a lot of other things they would like to do, sometimes selfish things that they wanted to do, or self-involved things that they wanted to do, and saying, hey, Take a, take a week, just one week out of your summer, and come with others, and we're going to go wherever, because uh, I've gone to lots of different places around the country with, with youth. Come with us, and we're going to put you in a van, and we're going to drive to Savannah, Georgia. That took some convincing for some kids, not all, but some. So you get in a van and you drive all the way to Savannah, Georgia, and it's, it's difficult and you always have some issue. We took our trailer and tried to take it through a uh, um, car wash, cut it open, right? You always have some issues, right? You always have some issues. And there always also is some difficulty. But in the end, you get to be there with lots of other younger people, and you're doing some mission work for somebody who is in need. Something selfless. Something out of love. And most youth, once they experience that, with their own freedom and in their own will, they go, I want to go next year. And I want to go next year, and the year after that. And if not that, I want to start doing things for other people. They get, if you will, enslaved to loving other people. And this, for Paul, is the goal for us all. 
And again, what does he say here in Galatians? For the whole law is summed up in a single commandment, you shall love your neighbor as yourself. Love your neighbor as yourself summarizes the whole law. I don't know if you've ever seen, seen things like the, uh, the Talmud or something like that. It's volumes and volumes and volumes of the law and, and then comments on the law. And here it is, the law being so involved and so extensive. Paul says, you know what? Let's sum it up. Love your neighbor as yourself. You got it. That, well, that is a summary of the entire law. If you're loving people as yourself, if you're loving people, then my guess is you're doing what the law would want you to do. You're doing what God's will would want you to do. If you're loving people as you love yourself. We are made free, Paul says. Christ makes us free. We're made free. And then the question is, what do you do with that freedom? And for Paul, it's pretty clear. He says it in another way in, in Romans. But thanks be to God that you who have one, who once you were once slaves to sin. Again, sin is this thing so that, that robs us of our will. It is something that, that we do, we're caught up in. Anything you're kind of caught up in, any, any sort of you know, addictions, or you remember we had the shack? Anyone who's caught up with the things in their shack that enslaves them to something else, other than being free. Christ seeks to liberate you from that. So he says that you who once were once slaves to sin become obedient from the heart to the standard of teaching to which you were committed. So listen closely. And, and having been set free from sin, have become slaves to righteousness. Now, righteousness, again, he goes, well, what is righteousness? Loving your neighbor. Being set free from slavery, he says, I start to become a slave to loving people, to loving others. That's the thing that I want to do most of all. We're a slave to the law of love, which defines righteousness for Paul, the law of love. If you act in a loving manner, you're acting righteously. So this idea of being free and then freely enslaving yourself to loving others is what's running through Paul's mind all the time about what it means to be a Christian. Again, but he has a warning for us. What could ruin that? I, I mean, we, we can all say, yeah, we're to love our brothers and sisters and to love each other and that God makes us free and gives us freedom to love one another. But Paul is writing to, to the Galatians, there must be an issue. Why would he bring this up? So he writes in his letters to the Galatians, if, however, you bite and devour one another, take care that you are not consumed by one another. Be aware, don't start biting each other. Otherwise, you may very well consume each other. I, you know, I, one of the things I wanted to show you this about when, about conferences, um, 
one of, one of the things that is before us and all conferences uh, this year is disaffiliation. There are some churches that are disaffiliating from the United Methodist Church and becoming either independent or joining another denomination that's been, been formed. And Paul says to us that we're to love our, each other, our brothers and sisters. That's what you're supposed to do. But if you start biting, and then they bite you, and then you bite them, and then they bite you, you will devour yourselves. Now, for the most part, the, the issue of disaffiliation has been one that has gone without a lot of biting, but not everywhere, not in every case. Uh, Northern, North Carolina, a lot of biting, a lot of biting in North Carolina. Right. In other conferences, there's been a lot of biting, and it has gotten the way of us loving each other. That's what happens when you start biting. And indeed, there are some churches that, that um, bite more than others. I have been in, in some congregations where I felt more like a chew toy than anything else. And the worst thing that we can do, Paul, and why does Paul put this in here? He's talking about love and freedom and righteousness. But in the end, he goes, don't bite. You ever had a, had a child and that child bites? They, they, learn, they learn that they can, can try to impose their will by biting. And as anybody who's been bitten by a small child knows, their teeth are very sharp. When they bite, it hurts. And so the, you eventually have to, and I don't know what, how you do it, but I've never had to discipline a child to get them to stop from biting. But stop biting. No biting. Right? Even if you get a new dog, sometimes you have to teach that dog not to bite. Sometimes you have to teach the church, don't bite. Because if you start biting, you are inflicting pain on your brother and sister. I'm upset, so I'm going to inflict pain on you. I'm going to bite you. But most often, people have teeth in return. That's why some people, I, I, I don't, again, I don't know how to teach this, but I've seen where some people, if the child bites, they bite them. Not hard, but to show them that, ah, stop biting. Do you like being bit? No. So don't bite others. <laughs> Again, I don't know how to teach a child not to bite. I just... But I do know that it hurts. How do you teach Christians not to bite? <laughs> because if we begin to bite, Paul says, you will consume each other if you start biting each other. For the most part, we haven't had a lot of biting, but we had, we've had some biting going on. It's not perfect in our conference, but pretty good. It could have been a lot worse. There are a lot of places that there's so much more biting going on. And as I said, there are some churches who don't listen to Paul, where he says, if, however, you bite and devour one another, take care that you are not consumed by one another. Rather than loving each other, you're consumed by one another. So the very last thing that we ever want to do is start biting each other. So we gathered in that convention hall and we spent three days working through some of our issues. And we have a lot of issues. The health insurance for pastors going down. The pension fund and pension support being decreased. 
And I wanted to bite someone over that. <laughs> but that's the last thing we want to do, is start biting each other. And, and other issues that were hard to hear and hard to accept. But the last thing we want to do is stop loving each other. You might remember this movie, Braveheart. Have you seen Braveheart? Mel Gibson, and he's William Wallace, and he's fighting with, for the Scots who want to be free of the English, and all the Scots are about to go to battle against the English, and his question is, is to them, is what will you do with your freedom? You Scots are now free, we're free. What will you do with that freedom? All right, is the question he, he, he asks of them. But Paul asks in, in a way to us as well. What will you do with your freedom? You're all free. Christ has made you free. What will you do with your freedom? Will you use it to love one another? Right? Those, those youth, those kids who wouldn't miss a mission trip are freely choosing to love others. They're almost like enslaved to loving others. For you were called to freedom Everybody's seen the brave heart. It goes, freedom, right? For him, it's freedom to, to fight the English. For us, it's freedom to love. Brothers and sisters, you've been called to freedom. What we use that freedom for? Selfishness? Or will you love one another? I pray that we use the freedom that Christ bought at his own life, his own death, to make us free, that we will use our freedom out of our own free will, not doing it because someone else is ordering you to, your parents are ordering you to go on the mission trip, no, you want to go on the mission trip. Of your own free will, you desire to do this. Out of your own free will, you become slaves to doing good for others. I pray that for you and for myself and for anyone else who is freed through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Do you stand for our final hymn, The Gift of Love.
you, you can be seated, because I'm going to make one last point. You might want to come on out. It's not going to be that long. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And, uh, you know, it's a hard one for some people to hear. So I'm going to have you get seated so I can get out of here. <laughs> because I want to tell you, our world and our nation have learned to bite. We bite our neighbors all the time. Our politics become the politics of consuming each other, of biting and hurting each other. And that's not Christian. We as Christians are not to attack our neighbors. We are not to call them all the, if you're not with me, you're my enemy, and I'm going to bite you as hard as I can. Paul never expected that from any of us. We should love one another. And in our climate of biting and hating and conflict, we truly need true Christianity, which is one of love. Not only to love those who are your brothers and sisters, and even, even love your enemies. It grieves me to see what's happened to us and to our world. We've gotten so far away from what Paul was trying to say. You're free. What will you do with that freedom? Will you hurt each other with that freedom? Or will you love each other? All right? Love your brothers and sisters, even if you don't agree with them. It doesn't, he doesn't say, unless you disagree with them. No. So as you go from here, go into a world where biting is the norm for so many things, and be the Christians that Paul expected of us and Jesus died for us to become. Love one another and share that, teach that to a, a world that really needs to hear it now. And now I'm getting out of here. <laughs>